Hi and welcome to this video where I have my camera precariously, um, the camera is not stacked, it's resting on a stack of books that's like this high and not even straight because I'm trying to get the angle of the camera to be even, but it's not. Anyway, this video that you are watching right now <laughs> is a wrap up from the title. It is the July August wrap up. Oh, <laughs> um, I apparently didn't read a whole lot this period of time. I've more or less started picking up my reading in September as it is now. It's um spring officially, um, but I am in a jumper a jumpsuit, a scarf that I'm wearing out of laziness, but it's cute and I'm wearing it for the first time officially. And um, I've got a blanket here and I've got a coffee like a foot away from me. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's my way of saying it's cold today. <laughs> and um, I am trying to do a wrap up. Yes, so how many did I read over these two months? So one, two, three, four, five. I read five. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's a terrible amount. Um, I'm going to make this quick as possible. Let's see. It's only five books. How long could it take me? Um, a very long time. Um, yes, if you're, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the first one that I, my Kindle is so dirty and dusty, um, yes. Anyway, the first one that I read, um, that I finished in July, yes. Did I finish it in July? Tell me, tell me Goodreads. I finished it on the 2nd of July. Um, I rated it four stars. Um, in a, in a, in a earlier video, a video that's passed, it's been forever now, um, I said that I was saying this name wrong and I was right. It is a Scottish name. Um, I barely understand English pronunciation rules, let alone any other languages pronunciation rules. So, it was Don't You Forget About Me by Vari instead of me saying Mahari McFarlane. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed now. And it was in her um, author bio at the end. So, I don't know if the last book that I read by her actually had that as well. Anyway, four stars for this. Um, on my Goodreads uh, review, I more or less go on about how I wasn't enjoying it at the start. It's all of Ari's books are more or less dubbed as romance, but I don't think it really is. I think this is where it kind of carves out that genre of chiclet, but I really hate that. It's so unnecessary chiclet. Firstly, I hate when a woman is referred to as a chick. She is not a chicken. She is not a hen. She is not a creature. Well, I mean, it's weird to make that distinction between human beings and every other animal as a creature. I digress. Um, yeah, basically that's what it is though. Um, I hate that title though. I wish we just had a different genre name. Anyway, it's more or less a mixture between literary fiction, where literary fiction's notorious for not really having any precise genre elements, but it has hints of it, and, um, and romance. So, ch woman lit. It's not even like other people can read it too, not just women. It, it's so dumb. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's um so it's basically literary fiction and romance um so once I got past the fact or oh, once I got past 40% because it started to have a nice rhythm after 40% um once I got over the fact that it's not 
romance. It's more literary with romantic elements in it. I was so into it. Wow. Lucas, wow. <laughs> it's so long ago now that I've actually finished reading it and I've actually read a tinsy bit since then. But, wow. <laughs> it, yeah, it was, I thoroughly enjoyed it more than You Had Me At Hello. You Had Me At Hello was actually quite disappointing. More or less because I hate, this is another, <laughs> jumping backward forwards between thoughts. I hate the trope, um, right person, wrong time. <sighs> this book, um, Don't You Forget About Me, is right person, wrong time. Pretty much. Um, but You Had Me At Hello was just so much worse. It was like gut-wrenching and it was like secondhand embarrassment. I was like, just stop, stop. I don't, I'm not enjoying this. Are you enjoying, and you're not enjoying this. The characters aren't enjoying this. And then they end up together at the end. But like, the same more or less happens here, but it's not as terrible. I just didn't hate the character as much. Well, I didn't hate the character, the main character in You Had Me At Hello, but I didn't hate, what was her name? What's her name? I remember Lucas's name. Uh, Georgie? Yes, no, Georgina. Um, I didn't hate Georgina. I think it's cause I kind of like identify with her just a little bit, even though I've not had the life that she had, but just a little bit, like, anyway, <laughs> I liked it a lot more. That would just leave it at that. <laughs> the next book, Jesus Christ, took me forever to get there. Um, having my computer right here is actually kind of a distraction. Oh, I just wobbled the stack of books. <laughs> um... But you know what, it's actually quite helpful to me because it's working faster than my phone usually works and I don't have to unlock it because my phone always locks. Okay, um, this was in my maybe July TBR because I mentioned it that I was starting to read it. Um, I mentioned that it was Twitter's dubbed enemies with benefits. Oh my god, it wasn't. It friggin' wasn't. Assassin's Heart by Sarah Ayres. It wasn't. It was a three star read, barely, I feel like. It was so boring in that July DVR. I mentioned that I was bored. <laughs> I should have DNF'd it, but I'm too much of a curious person to want to know how things end that I'd rather sit through something so terribly boring to find out that ending than just love myself and DNF it. If I just DNF'd it, I would be like, well, then how the hell did it end? And I'm not gonna know unless I read. Well, I probably could find spoiler reviews, but I don't like that. <laughs> I just like finding things out for myself. It was like yesterday, my mom and I put on this shitty ass documentary called Alien Mummies of Peru, and it ended without giving any sort of conclusion. Not like, oh, they were fake. Oh, they were real. Oh, it just ancient people put these bodies together. It wasn't anything they were like, Watch part two. And I'm like, no thanks. <laughs> it was shitty enough sitting through all of this. No thank you. Anyway, um, yeah, it was... I don't think I gave any point, point something to Assassin's Heart. It, anyway, I'm done with that one. I just couldn't. I... It was... Oh, it could have been so much better. It didn't even have to be. Even though it was dubbed Enemies with benefits. Um, remove that. It did not need it. I was just curious to see if the, the trope had ever been done. Well, it's not a trope if it doesn't exist, basically. Um, I just was curious and I was just like, yeah, let's see what, how it's done. Um, even without that, the 
blurb of the book is actually quite interesting, but it's not executed well. It's just like, um, an assassin, assassin families. Also, um, I wasn't appreciating how more or less this world was built around cultures of like Italian, Spanish, uh, Latin, Latin Spanish, Latin American cultures. It was more or less an amalgamation of all of that. And I really wasn't vibing with it. I was just like, you're just using all of this to your convenience, which I don't think you've done any research on this stuff. Like there's a whole rich culture behind like masks in, I was gonna say Venice, then I was like, no, it's not Venice, it is Venice. Um, with all of their masquerade balls, and there's a, there's a lot there. There's so much history there behind the masks, behind all of that. And I just felt like there was nothing there. This book actually, you know how sometimes characters feel two-dimensional? This book felt two-dimensional. I said I wasn't gonna talk about this book, and now I am. Um, I just... I was actually really disappointed. There was so many good things. Like, it could have been so, 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 so good. It wasn't. <laughs> I mean, each to their own. Some people could thoroughly enjoy it. It was kind of like a little bit of a trashy fantasy romance, but it wasn't even that romantic. There was, like, a love interest, but barely anything happened and then the whole revenge plot I don't think that was fully fleshed anyway I am now moving on because shaking the table this table is like very sensitive and like shakes a lot and then I have like this globe a globe of the world on the desk and it creaks <laughs> it makes like a squeaking noise I'm sure it's been my videos before um anyway the next one was on my July TBR I didn't think I was ever gonna finish this book my notorious 50% done read book the one that I get criticized a lot for not so much on online book communities but more in, in my life with people that I know and um they berate me a lot for it <laughs> um just, have you not finished it, Julia? It would be something that I would very thoroughly enjoy. And I was enjoying it. I stopped because I didn't want to feel pain. The only reason why I actually got through it is because I read, listened to an audiobook. So I didn't actually read it, even though I have a physical copy. I listened to an audiobook because I was also making face masks at the time. So it was just very convenient to... um listen to the audiobook and I had no choice but to um, finish and then when I got to the end I had to walk away from the sewing machine go to my room pick up the physical copy listen to the audiobook and cry and it wasn't like massively crying like I hardly sob when it comes to reading and watching movies but I was really gutted <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one. It's this one. It's obviously a five-star read. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee while we all think about the fact that I actually finished this. Right, we're done listening. <laughs> uh, not listening, thinking. Um, yeah, I am. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, firstly, I did actually finish it. And I'm, I've decided to leave the bookmark that I originally was using for this book of where I first stopped reading it. I was actually not willing to be in pain um, when I first started reading it. <sighs> right, there we go. Um, that's it. Oh my god, I am such dickhead. Ugh. There's another book from my July TBR that I, um, read, finished, um, but it's in the stack of books that's holding up my camera right now, and I can't be bothered fiddling with all of this to get it. Um, it's The World's Wife by Carol Ann Duffy, which I, again, stumble, stutter over every time. It's a five star, do I remember? Yes, it was a five star. Um... 
I just want to confirm a quick second that I did only read five in this two month period. Yes, I only, well, excuse me for burping. Um, there was another book that I probably read majority of, but then finished in September. Anyway, um, Carol Ann Duffy, The World's Wife, poetry collection, five stars. Yes. Um, she has quite a biting, sarcastic voice, um, which is actually quite similar to my writing style to a certain degree. So it was actually very helpful to me when I finished writing, uh, finished reading it, that when I went to write the poems for my thesis, then I actually got some shit done because I found another voice to use. Anyway, um, yeah, it was really good. It was pretty similar to what I'm going to be, what I am doing with my thesis and then what I'm hoping to do with a PhD because I like to torch myself, apparently. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, it was very similar in that it's adapting stories that we know or maybe not so known stories, but adapting them anyway to make them known. Anyway, yeah, it was good. Feminist read. Um, I don't know what else I could say on that, really. I don't really know. Anyway, the next book I read, what did I rate it? Cause I don't remember. Um, just a flat four. It was a flat four star. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I first saw this in an email from Amazon because I do have a Kindle and because of that I get um, Amazon Kindle book prices and in an email, I think it was in an email, it popped up or I was looking at the phone app anyway. One way, or another, and one way or another, I was looking at ebook prices and I saw the title, I saw the trope and I'm like, do I buy this? Do I buy it just for the title and the trope? I don't know if I'm truly interested in it, but the title and the trope makes me want to be interested in it. And I'm glad I did buy it because it was actually quite an enjoyable read. It is um, Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Alexis? I apologize if it's not Alexis, but my brain is just like, what else? Anyway, yes. <laughs> um, so, the trope is fake dating. I mean, kind of there was at one point, there is only one bed as well, but it is quite a, uh, is cliche the right word? I, I want to say tropey, but when something's quite tropey, it then falls into being cliche, which I mean, it's not a bad thing. It was a very easy, quick, relax, wind down read. Um, yeah, there's that's, that's not much more I could say. So, uh, well, I could describe it a little bit. So, because I think it came out recently, did it not? It came out this year. Um, right, okay. Just give myself a moment because I've been talking for a bit. So, I need a little bit of a breather. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. So, the main character, um, I think it's from his perspective, I don't truly remember. Anyway, the main character, he's got a famous dad, a famous mum, so he's semi-famous, and all of his life he's copped bad publicity because of his dad, because his dad got involved with drugs and then went into like rehab and whatnot. Um, his mum is like a chill French woman living in the English countryside. 
I think it's the English countryside. I don't know. Um, yes, so there's another incident where he gets involved. He gets bad publicity because he literally just fell over and the press was like, wow, all the paparazzi. They were like, wow, look at him. He's abusing drugs and alcohol again when he literally just like tripped over his own feet. And um, I, the company that he works for is a charity. And he says that it's like the only place that will employ him because of his tendency to be in the press a lot. Um, and then he got threatened to be fired if he doesn't turn his bad press around. So that's where you get the whole fake dating involved. Anyway, yeah. So it was kind of a setup from his friend. Set him up on a date with a friend that she had. So like more or less <laughs> the only two gay guys that she knows and put some, well, it's not the only two gay guys she knows, but the only other gay guy outside of their friendship and friendship group that she knows. I think that's how it was described. Anyway, um, but the main character, he's kind of like a grungy punk dude because he has two mus mus musician parents. I don't think he's a musician, but he kind of like embodies the image of a musician. Like on the cover, he's got um, black t-shirt, black ripped jeans and black floppy hair. <coughs> so more or less. Um, yeah. Um, and then the other guy, the love interest, the fake dating guy, um, he is a posh lawyer. So it's also opposites attract. <laughs> That's, again, it's pretty tropey. Um, yeah, but it wasn't bad. It's, if you don't want to think critically about something and you just want something to read, that's it. That's go for that. Um, that was the last one, wasn't it? That's the last one I've read for the month. For the two months. Oh, I don't think I read much in July. A lot happened in July. So uni went back and then I went to part time. Because of that, if I ever want to get government support, I can't because I'm a part time student and the government expects part time students to get jobs. And I would if, you know, there wasn't a pandemic. And also if I had the time, research takes up a lot of time. When I first started, they gave us this little information packet and it says, expect the second half of your year to be a full-time job. You will be spending, or you should be spending 60 hours a week on research. And I'm pretty sure a full-time job is like 42 hours a week. So it's more than a full-time job times time, time, yeah, anyway. Um, so even if I am full-time, I'm still doing all of that research, but I've just dragged it out because I needed that extra time. So yeah, um, this is my way of saying if you would like to tip me, <laughs> tip me? I mean, okay, I've got a coffee. So if you would like to buy me a coffee, um, that would be very much greatly appreciated because I have still got so many books that I need to buy for my thesis, which is yay. <laughs> but again, it's hard to do when, you know, there aren't really jobs around and not any jobs that are suitable for my, um, studying. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Not really suitable for my studying lifestyle. Um, yeah. I also have an Etsy store that I have got zines up for purchase. Up for purchase? That sounds so weird, but I sell zines, so if you would like that. Um, it's also something that I've tried to make time for. So, it would help immensely. If you bought one zine. <laughs> um, yeah, so all of this will be linked down in the description box below and I have like a link tree link so 
There's that main link as well, but linker? It sounded so weird as I said that. Anyway, um, yeah. I'll try to get all of my shit organized down in the description box below. Um, as I said, the tiniest bit of help is a massive big help. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for watching this video, even though I ended up rambling. I think it was like 20 minutes. How? Five books. It was five books. I might have to um, do a whole separate video only for September only because I've read seven so far <laughs> and September's not over. Um, Kindle just turned off it. Didn't spook me. Anyway, um, so yes, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to comment anything down below, do so. Just be nice and kind and um, not mean. Don't be a dick. I need to like... Oh, I could do that, couldn't I? I want to make like a comment and pin it there saying, don't be a dick. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm not going to do that. Probably going to break uh, community guidelines by doing that. Um, if you like my videos a lot, it would be groovy. Don't know what made me say that. Um, it would be cool if you subscribe. That's the word I was looking for. Why was it so hard to find? Um, yeah. Do all of the above? Yes? No? Okay. Um, that's, that's up to you. Pro choice here. Uh, I can't stop being weird. <laughs> anyway, that is it. That is all I have to say now. Um, I'm going to leave now. Bye bye. See you in the next video. Why does this feel weird? Okay. <laughs> Bye.